I have many in 71 years, 10 months, and question mark days as of March 4th that I've known him. So she gave kind of some listing of memory triggers. Number one, you found a new delivery system for your paper route. Yeah. The shopping news. Yeah. You put them under the bushes behind her house on Queenston Road. Oops, busted. <laughs> Who was that from? Me. This Sue. is Sue. Oh, Sue. Yeah. He's ratting me out. Yes. So, uh, did you decide not to uh, deliver? Uh, that was my. I had a rod that had something like 500 customers, and my cousin Barney. Mommy, I want to go to Toy Drink it. Had a route for for sixty, and he got paid the same as I did. Ooh, <laughs> I didn't like that. No, I don't blame you. Just a little bit more. And you had to well, doorknob all the paper. Oh, really? Like with a knob over my hand? Yeah, I'd rather throw them away and be a rubber band. So his took the same amount of time. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So. Uncle Chip, do you mind getting her a little more water out of the tap? Okay, follow Uncle Chip. Not much, please. <laughs> um, so number two, you found a new way to let the air out of the tires of grouchy Mr. Green's Model T Ford. Yeah. Throw glass on the driveway, and you took me along for the blame. The oh. cops didn't believe a word of it. <laughs> <laughs> Did you kids have done that stuff, or that you hadn't done that stuff? Uh, uh-huh. Many long Sunday drives to WRA to visit you. I sacrificed the middle school or early high school socializing. <laughs> I would tell Dad I had homework, and he would say, well, you can do it in the car. Pout, pout. But the boys were starting to be of interest, and I ended up attending a dance there October 17th, 1953. <laughs> Date. Well, I think um, I got the impression that there were some good baby books made by your mother. Did you have oh, a baby yeah. book? Yeah. Where's that? Uh, it's probably in the basement. No, it's probably in the closet. Okay. Oh, your closet. My memory book's up in the my my memory box is up in my closet. Okay. That'd be cool to look at. It's behind all of his clothes. Okay. I remember rotten apple fights under the trees in the backyard on Queenston Road. When we were supposed to be picking them up. I remember our horrible tree we had on River Road. Well, but this was, this, we had two of them back there. Yeah. Taking it away. No, no, I, I, I am trying to find my place. I'm listening. Mommy, can I have No. No. What was the name of that no. apple that would turn to mush? Oh, transparent. Transparent, thank you. Is that what our tree was, yes. or is that what you had? Mm -hmm. No, both. Transparent apple. I can't believe it. We used to get rid of the apples in our backyard. We cleansed in a row by putting them on a stick and throwing them. We could throw them eight or nine yards away. <laughs> and so. <laughs> my assembly ball, December 27th, 1957. My date, John Obiot. <laughs> passed out on landing two. <laughs> he went down on the floor by the punch bowl. <laughs> so you your crutches and step on the table. I had my knee operated on it. I was on crutches, non medicine, and drank like a fish. <laughs> I didn't die. I believe we got an ambulance ride home. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Sterling, you can fill in the rest of that if you remember. <laughs> my parents weren't. I'm sure they weren't. I can see your father scowling. <laughs> Never said much, but he was. He didn't need to. <laughs> <laughs> he knew. Mom and I were going to your hotel room again. Mom and Dad went on vacation, and you came home from Dartmouth due to your bad knee. Uh -huh. So you you took a leave from school with your knee, or? Well, this was before. She's got it in reverse order. Because I came home, and then it was operated on. 
Then the assembly ball. Okay. Well, well, then, she might not have been in order. I don't think army, she's right? definitely not in order here. Oh, okay. She's definitely not in order, but um, like, did you, you miss school because of knee surgery? Or? Okay, so you were, you were injured in football. So you came home and had your knee surgery. Mm -hmm. Then what was next? I went to assembly ball. Okay. Got drunk. <laughs> <laughs> how then, long? how much longer till you got in the reserve? What reserve? I thought you did the army. Oh, I did the army. <laughs> probably, this was in December, probably I was, I went on active duty in May. Okay, you did that, and then you went back and finished college. And I went back and finished college. Okay. So seven. A getaway to St. Thomas with Pete, and here come the cows heading down the beach, you in the lead. Beth was very pregnant, and you had water specially delivered to your door. Yeah, because the, the water into the, into, the whole, into the room was all salt water. Uh, oh. okay, so you, we went on a little trip down to Virgin Islands with Pete too. Yeah. No, did you have miscarriage before? Yes, both. No, I know both. No. One before and one after. No, you had both. Two in between. Thank you, Snot. Oh, he might have been a bad one. Go ask if I do another one. Oh, yeah. I was the one that was supposed to be here. Exactly. Whatever. Well, that's what I'm counting on. Exactly. I remember running around Centerville Mills Camp in July of 1945 when Dad was a counselor and you were the camper. Yeah. We were both sick November 1940 with ear infections. Mom nursed us with steam drops and antibiotics. It was a full-time job. Mom said that said when I was a baby I had eyes for no one but you when you were around. I called you Turl. 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 And this is where again where I get the she pulled out her baby book. Was, For my first birthday you gave me a whole gate wagon and rings. My second birthday you gave me a play telephone you bought with your own hard earned pennies. I never let it go. It helped me eat my cake. Well, these are just a few things, memories and memories, and now 75 years later. I'm here to say across the miles, happy three quarters of a century birthday to all. I love you, Sue. So, so this is a little out of order, because um, I got a couple emails from Robert Olson. So, uh, there's only, a, <laughs> only had a couple of things yes. to say. Yes. <laughs> so Sorry. <laughs> well, this is number six. So earlier we'll get to number one through five. I would have loved that. The world. football. <laughs> I've enjoyed all the football games we went to together, beginning with selecting season seats in 1960 for the Browns home games. Remember you, I, and Bill Matthews handpicked them as everybody's second choice. I still have seats today in the new stadium. Remember the games at Ohio Stadium and staying with you and Beth when she was able to get tickets through Dr. Fawcett's office. Sometimes we were very wet and very cold. Mostly it was nice weather. We also remember the time when we were our way, uh, when you were our way to Ann Arbor for an Ohio Michigan game. Yeah. It was called off at the last minute due to the Kennedy assassination. We had gotten about as far as Toledo. Yeah. Mm. So. Yeah. Yeah. Mary say, says, please give your dad a big hug and kiss for me for his birthday. <laughs> But see, them living in Pennsylvania, you only saw, what, once a year? Is that? Yeah. You also lived in Pennsylvania? No. No, 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 no. Mary's Mary's uh, Lampierce. Lampierce. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, uh, Sandy and Roger Penix. Careful of that lamp over there. I might add all caps. Okay. 
The Penix is all oh, caps. Oh, yes, all caps. Now, see, Katie reads that as somebody screaming at her. When she gets an email that's in all caps. So what did Sandy have to say? Yeah. Oh, no, it, was, it was Roger. It was Roger. No, it was... Oh, was Ron, Sandy? Roger's having Sandy. shoulder surgery, according to Dick Taylor. Okay. What did Sandy have to say? Bitch, 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 bitch. We have fond memories of you and the rest of football coaching staff of Worthington High School in the 60s and the camaraderie that developed between those young coaches and their families. We are thankful that many of the, these relationships continue today. It's been most rewarding to experience the challenges that have occurred to the families of the coaching corps, from kids to spouses to grandkids and nests in various places. We are grateful to have been part of this journey with you and yours. Our hope is many more years of good health, good experiences, and goodwill for you and the rest of your coaching family. Hugs, Sandy, and Bob. Let's see who this next comes from. I, don't, I think it's kind of just Dick Mess. Okay. This one the official. Okay. I do have some stories and some compliments to pass along. First and foremost, Sterling has been an outstanding swimming rules interpreter and a credit to high school swimming. He is a no-nonsense sort of guy who is high efficient and is dealing with officials, schools, and swimming. swimmers. The Sterling, what you see is what you get. We, and I mean in particular Central Ohio officials, will miss him very much. As for myself, Sterling has always been great to work with and supportive of me personally in my assigner role. He never has been too busy to help with a problem that I might have been having or to offer an opinion on rules interpretation question. He went to bat for me to get a shot to work at the state meet a couple years back and was prepared to do, and do it again this past season. But I certainly did not want to jeopardize his position with the OHSAA. So I begged off, but I thought that he was the kind of guy whom you would want to watch in your back. Several years ago, the Central District Tournament meet had to, sorry, had to be held at Ohio University Pool in Athens. Everyone who, was, who has been there has seen or had to use the infamous rubber bulkhead that is used on one side to create the 25 yard competition pool. It requires pretty good sea legs to get onto and off of the bulkhead to solid ground. Sterling was the referee at the Friday session and required to stand on the bulkhead. I was not there at the time, but when I arrived the next day, I was greeted with a series of hilarious descriptions from the other <laughs> officials about Sterling's trials and tribulations on the bulkhead and the bets that the, that bets were being made that Sterling would deep six at some point. <laughs> Fortunately, he survived, but understand that the Las Vegas odds stood 5-2 in favor of him going into the water. I also understood that over the years, not all officials have been so lucky. Good job. But, but of course, Sterling saved his masterpiece for this past season. When we officials heard his exploits at Machu Picchu, at first we were very concerned. Later we learned that he'd be okay, if somewhat worse for wear. A bunch of us, over a few beers at Orion's pub, thought that we might show up at the hos his hospital bed with a diving flash course flashcards to show his dive down the stairs. We all felt certain that it had been at least an eight or a nine. We thought better about it though. He felt bad enough without us clown showing up to rub it in. Oh, he would have loved it. It would have been a good laugh. On these notes about a, a few of life's most embarrassing moments, I close saying, happy 75th birthday, Sterling, and good luck in your total retirement. You certainly paid your dues. Look at this guy. Yeah. So. Yeah. <coughs> How are you doing over there? You doing okay? Are you, uh, we got, I'm not going through all this tonight anyways, so.